Hi, my name's Sammy from Body and Birth Physiotherapy. This video is a presentation that I gave at the Utopia Women's Wellness event in Brisbane, discussing the essentials for women's pelvic health. Has anybody here heard of their pelvic floor before? Yeah, we've got a few people. Not a whole lot from anyone else, that's okay. So, <laughs> my practice, Body and Birth Physiotherapy, is a unique practice for women that specializes in providing education and raising awareness for women about pelvic health issues. Um, figure, if you can't say the word vagina at a women's wellness event, then where can you? I mean, how many cute names do we have for our private parts? We've got Panani, the JJ, Puha, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Now it seems really funny, but in reality, I do feel that this inability to refer to our own body parts and this tabooness is a huge contributing factor to the lack of awareness and lack of openness about pelvic health issues. It is so hard to get an accurate statistic about the prevalence of pelvic floor health and dysfunction, and so many women suffer in silence and just put up with these issues because they don't feel comfortable talking about them with their friends, with their family, or even with their doctor. But the current statistics show that anywhere between 40 to 50 percent, some even say up to 60 to 80 percent of women will experience some type of pelvic floor dysfunction in their lifetime. That's huge. And while it means I would never be out of a job, I do believe that it is so important to provide awareness and education for women and young girls before these issues get to a problematic stage. So your pelvic floor muscles are pretty important in your everyday life. So they literally form the floor or the base of your pelvis and help to support your bladder and bowel and all of your pelvic organs. So they stop things from falling out. They help to provide control to your bladder and bowel. They enhance the sensation of orgasm and allow you to have sex. They help to support the weight of your baby when you're pregnant, but then they also have to allow for your baby to move out when the time is right. And finally, they also work in conjunction with your deep core abdominal muscles to provide control and stability to your pelvis, your spine, and even your hips. Has anybody here heard of Kegels before or done pelvic floor exercises? Yeah? Cool, I'm getting lots of nods. Awesome. So it's so great to know that people are being proactive and are interested in looking after their pelvic floor health. You only get one body, right? You may as well look after it. However, what I have seen over the years is that these pelvic floor exercises or these Kegel exercises can actually be more harmful than helpful for a lot of people. And this is because the majority of women that I have seen for pelvic floor issues actually have problems because their muscles are too tight, not because they are too weak. So if you already have a tight muscle that's contracted and then you're strengthening it, you're actually just going to reinforce the problem rather than resolving it. So all muscles have, I kind of, I call it like a Goldilocks range where they can produce the most amount of force or the most amount of strength. And that tends to be when the muscle is in its longer position or in a more open position for my elbow, for example. But if your muscle is already here, then when you contract, it's just got no leverage. There's nowhere for the muscles to contract to, to provide enough support for your pelvic organs or to stop you from leaking, for example. So tight pelvic floor muscles hypertonic pelvic floor muscles actually contribute to a whole host of different pelvic floor issues. So things like incontinence, so leaking when you're laughing, running, jumping, doing any kind of exercise. Pelvic organ prolapse, so that's where your pelvic organs, the, your uterus, your bladder and your bowel, actually start to fall down or sometimes even outside of the body because they don't have adequate support from underneath from the pelvic floor muscles. Um, things like pain with sex and being unable to use a tampon or have a pap smear because the tissues and muscles are just so hypersensitive and so tight can be a, a huge problem. Um, and also bowel movements um, can be quite problematic if the muscles aren't able to relax enough 
to be able to let bowel movements happen smoothly. So the demographic of women that I see and continue to see over the years tends to not just be older women or women who have just had babies. In fact, I see a lot of women in their 20s and in their 30s, even a lot of women who have never been pregnant with pelvic floor issues. And to me, this speaks a great deal about the way that we, as a culture, tend to move and how that affects our body's natural abilities to perform biological functions. So natural biological functions that we should be able to do include becoming pregnant, giving birth, running, jumping, having sex, without pain or future issues or any other repercussions. So, the good news is that while these issues do tend to be really common, you can make even just small changes in your life and to the way that you move that can have huge impacts on the health of your pelvic floor. So things like from the way that you stand to the way that we sit, to the way that we walk, compared to a more posterior driven gait, actually using all of the muscles in your body, your pelvic floor, your glutes, and your hamstrings. And then how much time we spend sitting versus standing versus walking versus moving your whole body. So the answer really is not just to do you know, your 100 Kegel exercises every day to maintain your pelvic floor health, but instead to just start to use your whole body in a different way, a more natural way, the way that our bodies are designed to move. One of the biggest key movements that we have been missing throughout our lifetimes, for most of us, is actually squatting. So when we squat, it actually creates more space in the pelvis. So it would be like taking my, my bicep, pretending that it's my pelvic floor, from here in a more contracted, shortened state to being much more open. So allowing the muscles to lengthen and return to that state of a more functional pelvic floor, being able to produce more strength. So we're not talking just your gym squats, but we're talking the going to the toilet like you're going camping kind of squats. So we tend to be really good at squatting when we're toddlers, but because chairs are so readily available and we drive everywhere, we just don't need to squat anymore. So we don't, and then we lose it. So your pelvic floor muscles, like every other muscle in your body, really is just a use it or lose it kind of thing. Um, and if you think to how much time we spend sitting, so we tend to sit to drive. So we tend to sit to commute to get to wherever we need to go. A lot of us have to sit for work. We tend to sit for relaxation time, so watching a movie, um, having coffee with friends, we sit for every meal. We even sit to go to the toilet, which really isn't the best way or a natural way for our bodies to do those processes that we need to do. But by starting to introduce more natural movement into your life, you can actually restore your pelvic floor function and learn how to prepare your body best for pregnancy, for delivery, for any challenges, uh, potential challenges that you might occur, might encounter throughout your life. Um, but so many of these pelvic floor issues that women just put up with, like incontinence, like prolapse, like pain in sex, are really unnecessary to live with because there is so much that you can do about it.